Hey guys, it's Dr. Sam Robbins. Today's topic is about intermittent fasting and if it lowers or increases testosterone levels. And I bring up this topic because I've got a lot of questions about it. I know intermittent fasting or time-restricted fasting is very popular these days. I have my own personal opinion about it and I'll tell you about it later. Um, and it all depends on what your goal is, all right? So today's topic is specifically about testosterone and athletic performance or you know body composition, sex drive, and losing fat and strength and muscle and all that stuff. Not necessarily about longevity or autophagy or any of that stuff that has not been proven at all if intermittent fasting will cause you to live any longer and over the next years. All right, so here it is. Um, the question is, Dr. Robbins, I've been doing intermittent fasting for over three years now. I am doing the 16-8 fasting protocol, basically eating during an eight hour period. Um, it's working well. I've lost 17 pounds and kept it off. However, something just doesn't feel right anymore. Um, I've re I realized that, oh, that I've slowly been losing strength and muscle mass and I'm also working out as usual the entire time. I was eating the same amount of protein and food as well. Now, actually, I've been eating the same amount of protein, right? But obviously, it's eating less. That's why. That, by the way, on a pause, a lot of the big reasons that intermittent fasting does work for weight loss is simply because you're eating less calories. There's nothing special about it. You can't eat 3,000 calories during a specific time and still lose weight, all right? At the end of the day, as they say, calories in, calories out. If you're going to lose weight, and you're eating 3,000 calories a day, for example, you have to eat less, all right? Intermittent fasting isn't gonna do anything. A lot of people do intermittent fasting and they lose weight simply because it's easier for them to just, quote unquote, not eat. You know, during that time, a lot of people, you know, snack and so forth. So let's move on. Um, um, now, after doing a yearly blood test, my doctor said that my total and free testosterone levels are in a lower range. In fact, each year during the past three years, my testosterone keeps going lower and lower. Incidentally, my libido has been slowly declining as well. Um, I rarely get my quote unquote morning erections. Is this because of intermittent fasting? I thought it was supposed to raise testosterone levels, uh, growth hormone, and all these other youth hormones. Can you please give me some clarity? Um, okay, a lot of things going on. First of all, I have no idea what you're doing. You know, as we age, you're gonna start losing muscle mass and strength and testosterone levels, but three years is not that big of a deal. Um, all right, so let's deal with some of the specifics about this. All right, as far as testosterone levels, I know a lot of intermittent, intermittent fasting people will say, oh, it increases testosterone levels. First of all, if intermittent fasting is working for you, you look good, you feel great, you're awesome, you're, you know, you're an Adonis now, keep doing it, all right? I know a lot of people, if I say anything negative or anything that goes against your religious views about eating, whether it's intermittent fasting or carnivore diet or vegan diet or um, high protein, low carb, whatever vegan diet, I, I don't know what it is, but you guys are like insane with how religiously dogmatic you are about your diet, okay? It's just a simple eating plan. That's all it is, okay? If you get the results and it's easy and convenient for you and you can stick to it year round, do it, okay? If you're not getting any health problems, do it. In this individual, they are actually having testosterone issues. So intermittent fasting, blood tests, I mean, as far as all this stuff, there's clinical studies that show op opposing factors. Now someone will say, oh, intermittent fasting increases testosterone levels 180%, this, that, and the other thing. During a what time time span? If you dig deeper in all these flawed clinical studies, which I've studied so many of them over the years, and I'll tell you what's happened with other people's blood tests, um, Listen, your total testosterone may go up temporarily, but your free testosterone levels, that's what's really biologically active, all right? That's what's doing all of the muscle building and all that stuff. That tends to go down. Why? Because intermass, intermittent fasting actually increases sex hormone binding globulin. So you have testosterone, okay? Think of it as, as your total revenue, okay? And sex hormone binding globulin, binding, goes up. So that tes total testosterone, it doesn't, it's not active. What you ideally would like is to lower your sex hormone binding globulin so that total testosterone gets more freely bind, unbinded, unbounded, I should say. And now you're, net income, okay, is higher. Think of it, just because you made a million dollars and your net income hasn't gone up, 
and you're still making $500,000 profit, quote unquote, or whatever I'm just making up, doesn't do you any good. It's about the profit, and that's what your free testosterone level is. So in intermittent fasting, this clinical study said shows that it lowers your free testosterone levels, okay? And as someone like, blood test, clinical study. Listen, I'll tell you about what happens in the real world. Clinical studies are only short term, short term. Okay, you're gonna do anything short term, who cares? It's a long term thing, it's a long game, okay? You can do the right things for your relationship, for example, but if you only do it for a week, a month, or two months, it doesn't matter. You're not gonna keep that relationship going month after month, year after year, okay? So as far as all that, the testosterone levels tend to decline over time, all right? That's just one example. This individual also talked about growth hormone levels, okay? Now, intermittent fasting or all this stuff shows growth hormone levels go up. Why does growth hormone levels go up? Well, cortisol, stress hormones go up. Intermittent fasting, all right? It's fasting. You're basically dying, okay? Your body is in fight or flight. Oh no, what's going on? I'm not eating. What happens? Stress levels go up. As stress levels go up, cortisol levels go up. Adrenaline goes up. That's not what you want. Short term, it's fine. Long term, bad. All right, people are already not sleeping well. People on intermittent fasting sometimes don't sleep well because adrenaline is going up. You feel good, right? Because adrenaline's going up. Short term, awesome. Long term, bad. Growth hormone levels, let's just go up. Let's just say they do go up in clinical studies. It's short term. By the way, what happens to IGF levels, IGF-1 levels? That's what really does the factor. That's what really does what growth hormone converts to IGF, all right? That's what does all that amazing factors. In fact, if growth hormone wasn't um, discovered first, okay, IGF would actually be called growth hormone. Nevertheless, okay, IGF levels tend to go down with intermittent fasting or any type of long-term fasting, long-term fasting, all right? So that's the key. It, IG, growth hormone goes up temporarily, IGF levels come down. Why? Because in order for IGF to go up, you need thyroid levels to be optimal, you need factors like testosterone and estrogen to be optimal, higher levels. You also need insulin to go up, all right? Blood sugar. And when you're fasting, everything is lower, so all these things go up. Growth hormone goes up, but IGF doesn't because it requires all these other hormones. Guys, it's very complicated, your hormonal casket. Take it from me, an endocrinology guy. Don't just because this shows this and that shows that and, blah, 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 and everything and that doesn't work in the real world, okay? Just because it shows in a temporary short-term clinical study does not ever, ever, ever equate to long-term results, okay? With that said, IGF levels go down, okay? Growth hormone temporarily goes up, okay? Let me put it another way. Guys, bodybuilders, the world's biggest, biggest humans, all right? Full of muscle, awesome genetics, right? Tons of drugs, okay? If intermittent fasting worked so well, these guys would do it to build as much muscle as possible. It doesn't work, guys, all right? That said, so all these factors come into play and that's not what you want, okay? So that's another factor that goes up. Um, you know, if the guy's sex drive is coming down, that's another thing. Again, short term, fine. Now, what am I getting to all this stuff? If you're having these problems and you love doing intermittent fasting, maybe you do intermittent fasting, you cycle it, okay? Maybe you do intermittent fasting for 12 hours at a time, okay? So instead of eight hour window of opportunity, some people do only four hours or some people do only one big meal at a time. This is bullshit, man. Look, how are you going to eat all the required protein and calories in one or two meals? All right, your body can only really digest and synthesize and optimize protein synthesis at about 50 grams at a time. Anything over that, you start creating oxidization. That means your net profit on the protein goes down. All right, so with that said, um, ideally, that's why body, send me, someone like me who weighs over 200 pounds, I have about 250 grams of protein a day. So I'm eating about 40 to 50 grams, four, five times, sometimes six times a day, all right? If you're only eating one or two meals a day, how are you gonna smash all that into one, you know, into that short time span and optimize all this stuff, especially if your goal is to increase muscle and lose fat and all this stuff, it just doesn't happen. All right, you wanna do it short term, fine. You wanna do intermittent fasting, short term, fine. Cycle it or do it for 12 hours at a time or maybe you do one day of full blown, blown fasting and the other days you eat normally. Whatever works for you, it's fine. I'm not here to judge you, do whatever you want. 
I always speak to you ducting first before you do anything. But nevertheless, I'm telling you what works in the real world, okay? Intermittent fasting, shh, long term, only eating between a four, six, maximum eight hour time, it doesn't work. Especially when it comes to testosterone, building muscle, losing body fat. Remember, body composition matters. Just because you lost weight, okay, doesn't mean you lost fat. There's a big difference between body weight and body fat, okay? It's very easy to lose muscle and water. Okay, your body wants to get rid of muscle because it, it requires too many calories and energy, all right? It wants to actually hold on to fat because it's a survival mechanism. When you're fasting, you're in survival mode. So your body's gonna want to preserve fat to survive. It doesn't want to preserve muscle, all right? That's why bodybuilders eat so much because it's unnatural to have all that muscle. So with that said, you wanna do whatever you want. That's perfectly fine. At the very least, you want to increase testosterone levels some other me methods. I have listed below this video in the description area how to increase your testosterone levels. At the same time, you wanna decrease stress hormones such as cortisol, which goes up with any type of stress. Poor sleep and fasting is a stress. Okay, all animals who fast, stress hormones go up. This includes humans. Fasting is stress on the human body, on any animal, okay? That's why you're happier when you eat all the time. So with that said, you want to increase testosterone levels and decrease stress hormones. I've got lots of videos about this topic and natural ways to improve both of these hormones. With that said, let me know your questions about today's topic. If you do intermittent fasting, tell me your long-term results. I've seen, by the way, tons of blood tests, okay? Tons of it. Uh, I've got another video about weight loss and muscle loss and all this. In fact, there's a, a video by Dr. Peter Atia about how he lost muscle in the process okay and i'll put a video clip of that as well and even for myself like in the last four or five months i've been I, I, you know i did a dexa back in january and i hadn't done one in years and from the from january to the last period that i had done a dexa my body weight was almost identical maybe i was two pounds lighter this year versus the last time but my body fat was up I think I went from 10 to 16% body fat. 16 is not the end of the world, but you know, that was a significant loss of muscle and gain of fat. So with that said, if you want to improve your hormones and, and so forth, you do intermittent fasting, cycle it, okay? Or take things that will improve your hormones. Leave your questions below. I'll make additional videos about this topic. Anything you need further clarification, I will answer it. As always, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. And I wish you a very happy and healthy day.